Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Today across the country, Planned Parenthood, the ACLU, the Women's March, and other groups have organized protests in response to the new wave of laws banning abortion. While many states passed the heartbeat bill, uh, banning abortions after a fetal heartbeat can be detected, and uh, Alabama's ban that doesn't even make exceptions in the event of rape or incest has drawn the most criticism, even from anti-abortionists like the televangelist Pat Robertson, who spoke out saying, Alabama has just gone Boy. too far. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, my goodness. And that is by design. These laws are a coordinated effort to ignite legal challenges, eventually leading to the Supreme Court in hopes that the Supreme Court will overturn Roe v. Wade, the 1973 landmark decision providing a fundamental right to privacy that protects a pregnant woman's right to choose. This divisive issue raises valid moral, ethical, and medical issues on both sides. But we are not here to debate those points. We, however, are here to discuss the impact that this has on our rights as women to make a choice for our own bodies and lives. My goodness. Is it possible mm -hmm. to be um, both anti-abortion and pro-choice? I wanna know, is that possible? I think in some instances it is. I do claim to be pro-choice, but I have, been in, um, been around someone who used abortion as birth control. Oh, don't like that at all. And mm -hmm. I, when it comes to people doing that, yeah. I just can't yeah. stand for that. It's damaging to it's your body. It's damaging. Oh it is. It is. It is absolutely awful. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side, when you have women who are facing medical issues, mm -hmm. women who have been raped, who have been victims of incest, mm -hmm. and you're telling them that they cannot terminate mm -hmm. this pregnancy, mm -hmm. I can't stand for that. Mm -hmm. And this, to me, is a coordinated attack on women's health and rights, and it's a war on women. And, and, and Michelle, I want to uh, correct you just a bit here. I think they're stating if it is uh, incest or mm -hmm. in some states, though. In, in some states, it's not, not in Alabama. In Alabama. Not in Alabama. Oh, Alabama. It's Alabama. It does not matter yes. if you were raped or if you were a victim of incest. Mm -hmm. And and, 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 and it has gone on. As people have been quoted, those lawmakers, a few of those lawmakers have been quoted saying that that is the blessing from what has happened to yes. some of these women. Yes, they have been quoted as saying that. Oh, so I'm disgusted by that. I just cannot in 2019 mm. that we're having this discussion yes. right now that so many states are following this trend mm. completely. Well, Rashawn, I, I have to say that I am so glad that you just spoke the way you just did. Yes. Because, um, and, you know, I pondered on this a lot when we, when we you know, s decided to speak on this, mm -hmm. but I am um, anti-abortion but pro-choice, mm -hmm. so it is very possible. Um, I have had an abortion. Oh, wow. I've had two of them. And the first one, um, I was 19, and I did not know. I was in college. I was going through the process, and um, he, I had a very good boyfriend. It was a good time, and, and I just, my mother told me I was pregnant, and I was like, no, I'm not. And I had a period and everything, and I went to the doctor just for a routine checkup, and she was like, oh, congratulations. And I was in school, and I was um, uneducated about what to do. And my sister's like, no, you know, you don't do that. It's going to ruin your life, you know. So I went, had the first one, and it was, uh, I, I was devastated for a very long time. And then it happened again. I was with my boyfriend, who later became my husband, but I had just signed with Jive Records. And so um, a woman in the company, I, told, I cried, I, I was like, God is going to hate me. He's not going to bless me with children. He's going to, um, he's going to think I'm awful. You know, same thing when I went through a divorce. I thought God would hate me because of that as well. And I went through it again, but then I vowed after that, I said, this, I can never do this again. Mm -hmm. This will never happen. I don't care what the circumstances are. I will never do this again. Mm -hmm. um, thank the Lord that he has blessed me with two children. But every time I, I would go in for when I was pregnant, you know, how they ask you how many pregnancies have you had? I was always reminded that I have children in heaven. And so um, I'm anti-abortion because 
it is, it is devastating and it, it is hurtful to have gone through that. And I know people will probably call me a murderer or whatever, but I didn't know better and I did what was best for me, you know? <laughs> um, but women should have that choice because every circumstance is different and may, and had I went through the process of having the children, maybe I wouldn't be sitting here today with you able to express the story and, and be able to tell my story because God gave us this platform. So if God gave me this platform, this is what I, I signed up to be transparent. I signed up to tell my story. Um, yes, I don't think abortion is good. I hate it. I'm, I'm sad. I pray for forgiveness. But I do think that that is a person's choice, a woman's choice, mm -hmm. because it could be circumstances that could be devastating to the detriment of the child mm -hmm. and the woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what it did mentally um, is very hard to erase. I am pro-choice. As a woman, we should have the choice, just like a man, to determine what we want to do with our bodies and mm -hmm. how we want to do it. But I, I will just, I just wanted to tell that story for anyone that there are consequences to everything that yes. we do. Yes. But a man does not get to choose what those consequences should be. And that's where I stand. Thank you for telling your truth. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Uh, we are so glad that you have continued to join us in this conversation on abortion. And uh, before the break, uh, Selena just spoke her truth, and we're so very, very grateful courageous. for you. your Straight courageousness, guys. your vulnerability. Um, wow, absolutely wow. Let's talk a little bit about religion yeah. and how religion plays a role uh, in this discussion. Um, you know, religion, you know, and I'm a Christian, let me just state that for the record. Um, it can be depicted in so many ways and we've seen it uh, in the times of slavery where Christianity was actually utilized to keep people enslaved, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, I personally don't think law should be based on religion, religious beliefs because it's basically someone's interpretation in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I think people, I am pro-choice, I'm going to support a woman one way or the other because she only knows her particular situation. Right, yeah. right. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I have taken a number of friends and uh, will still take more if I can. If, if, if they needed me to do that, Absolutely. I will be there for them. Mm -hmm. I do agree, however, with you. Um, I don't like when young women utilize, it, utilize abortions as a form of um, birth control. Right. Yeah. Birth control. Mm -hmm. It is not. Yes. Uh, we have all type of, what is it, marinas? Marinas. No, they, they got a lot of things going on for that. Absolutely. Yeah, so you don't, we don't want to do Hatch. that. We don't want to make that uh, a pattern because we got to understand, too, we're also damaging our bodies mm -hmm. each time it happens, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I got to say I'm pro-choice. Yes. And I don't think a man or any legislation should tell me what I can do with my body. I'm completely against it. Yeah. Well, growing up, well, I, I got pregnant young with my oldest son, Eric. And as we all know, my father is a minister. And so Reverend Braxton's daughter mm -hmm. got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And there was one lady in the church in particular, you know, and she was almost trying to shame me. And of course, my mother wasn't having it, by right, the way. Right. Um, but, oh, you're the Reverend's daughter. I can't believe you laying down with people, blah, blah, blah. And I almost let her get to me. And at the time, we were about to sign with uh, Atlantic, mm -hmm. Atlantic Records. And I had a choice. And in all honesty, I went down to the clinic. I laid down on that table. They cleaned me up, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I said, stop. I can't do it. And I didn't go through with it. And I have my baby today. Eric, I love you very much. It was a very difficult decision. Because um, at the time, they tried to make it seem like I had to choose between my career and my child. And I, I chose my child. And for me, I'm definitely pro-choice. Say something if you want to. I don't care. We'll fight that battle later. But I am going to say this. I'm going to turn the corner for just one second. Um, when everything was happening about the abortion bans, I posted certain things on social media. And what really got my goat is that people will support posts about things like a joke 
or somebody's hair looking bad. But when it comes to your life choices and your life decisions, you don't have anything to say. And if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, absolutely. You have to let your voice be heard about your body because it's your choice, though. You can be anti this, anti that, anti whatever, but you should never, ever allow anybody else to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body when it affects you and it affects your life. And when you've never walked a mile in somebody else's shoes, you never know, you never understand. Mm -hmm. But you crucify us for, you know, you crucify people for needing welfare. Okay. <laughs> and then you want us to have all of these children mm -hmm. and bring them into circumstances that are not feasible, favorable, for, favorable mm -hmm. for them to thrive. And you still haven't done anything about the gun laws that are shooting up all of our babies. Oh, yes. Well, talking about the ta raising the taxes and then upset because now more people have to get on welfare, so the taxes have to go up. And, and, and then in the same breath, you're saying that some doctors may be charged with murder. Yes. That's wrong. When these black and brown babies can't have a police officer charged with murder Ooh. in their death. That's Say something. Good. Say something. Mm. Say That's something. <laughs> The truth. See, that's good, Shani. Right there. We just need to, it, it seems like an attack on a woman's rights mm -hmm. as a whole in America. Mm -hmm. It is, it doesn't seem like it, it is. And it I'm is. gonna tell you something, you know, women can march all we want, protest all we want, but it starts with men. You're the ones making these laws. They are the ones that have to say enough is enough for their women. When you start respecting women and start mm -hmm. looking at us as an, uh, an ass, as an asset, as a human being, and as a human being, as as a as a as a, as a being that has birthed the, this country, birthed this world, brought this world to what you see it is. Mm -hmm. Without women, you, I mean, come on. Until you start understanding the, the just the minimal value of a woman, mm -hmm. we will always be here. And it starts with the man. If we came from your rib, mm -hmm. it starts with the man. Stop these laws. Stop them. Be the ones, be the voice for us because they're not listening to us. So you, men need to, to rally. Men yeah, need, need to march. Yeah. You need to march not just for your rights but for women's rights as well. Yes. Because they'll listen. The power is on the ballot. This is a yes. political mm -hmm. movement. It's not a social movement. So we can march and we can protest all we want. But the change is in those votes. Those, mm -hmm. And we got to utilize it and get people to run who echo the same sentiments that we do. Yes. And that's what this is all about. This, this is, is an urgency. This is, it's a state of, this is, it's, it's, it's ridiculous this is, what's going on in our country. Enough is enough already. Enough is enough. We are, we are not inferior because we're women. We're not, mm -hmm. we're human beings. Enough is enough. If you agree with a woman's right to choose what is best for her body, for her future, for her family, and for her health, there are some things that you can do to fight these laws. If you live in a state that is considering passing a restrictive abortion law, call your representatives immediately. These calls work because politicians want to be reelected. Pay attention to when the Senate is considering a federal judicial appointment and call your senators to tell them to vote no if the judge is anti-choice. Prioritize reproductive rights in 2020 for all offices. Ask or research where your politicians stand and make clear you won't be voting for anyone who isn't staunchly pro-choice, and most importantly, donate to or volunteer with local reproductive justice organizations. They are doing the real work to protect women on the ground in states with restrictive laws. Let us know how you feel at Sister Circle TV, on all of our social media platforms, and to all of you ladies, thank you for being transparent. You have saved lives today yeah. with your transparency and your vulnerability, and we hope you feel the love through the television screen.